Good morning. This is White Raptor News Ministries. How is everybody doing? All praise and glory to the mighty most high, our creator, who is one God. We're going to roll through uh, some parables here this morning, claiming Jesus Christ is fully man and fully God. Hundred. We got a hundred of them here. I don't know that we're going to go through all of these. But I'm just going to simply give you my understanding of what's being said here. John 1.14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now as we read through these, I'm going to ask, that's one right there, right off the bat, the very first one. Only the Son from the Father full of grace and truth where is the holy spirit the very first parable jesus once again the son ditches the holy spirit so if the holy spirit has been ditched then who is the father full of grace and truth the father here in this parable is the pope folks okay first timothy 2 5 for there is one god and there is one mediator between god and men the man Christ Jesus. Hold on. Here, Galatians 3.19. Amplified Bible over here to the left. Why then the law, what was its purpose? It was added after the promise to Abraham to reveal to the people their guilt. Because of transgressions, that is to make people conscious of the sinfulness of sin. And the law was ordained through angels and delivered to Israel. Not the world, not the Gentile, not in other nations, not the United Nations, but delivered to Israel by the hand of a mediator. What? Moses, the mediator between God and Israel, not the Gentile race, not the world, not everybody in the world, but to one nation of people, God and Israel, to be in effect until the seed would come to whom the promise had been made. Now who's the seed to come until the promise had been made? Ah, this is Jesus. But in the meantime, Moses was a mediator. Well, now you really got a serious problem here. Because clearly, I just showed you, Timothy says that there's only one mediator between God and men. The man, Christ Jesus. Contradictions, folks. This is what I do I I show you the contradiction. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. Okay, the creator, the self-existing eternal one, is not a deity God. Okay, he is the, the deity on this realm, this plane of existence, is Satan, folks. The creator, create, if, let me, let me really lay something heavy on you. If, Creator, who claims that he is one Lord, he is one Savior, one Creator, then Satan couldn't exist, and that would make God one in the same of Satan. But instead, what the Lord, the self-existing eternal one did, is he created a body of men, here, dwells bodily in men, and he created mankind evil. Swallow that pill. Mankind created on the sixth day of creation is created evil. When you add the sum of the word mankind, it comes to 66. M is a 13. A is a 1. That's 14. Plus an N, which is 14, gives you 28. A K is 11. That gives you 39. 9 is an I. That gives you 48. N14 again gives you 62, and then D naturally of 4 gives you 66. The very word mankind adds up to 66, and mankind was created on the sixth day. I can't put it any simpler than that for you. So when I think of Satan per se, when I think of Satan and speak of Satan, I speak of mankind. I speak of those that are in uh, power, those principalities, our governors and presidents. Well, they ain't even the real uh, shot callers, okay? They're just front men.
their weak old frontmen. Philippines 2.7, uh, Philippians 2.7 but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in his likeness of men. Likeness of men. What do we teach here about the likeness of men? Maccabees 3, verse 48, right here. And they laid open the book of the law in which the Gentiles, those are the United Nations that were created in Genesis 1.25, searched for the likeness of their idols. Being born... Key word here, born. Jesus was a born. You know what that is? That's called the beginning in the likeness of men. Jesus is the likeness of men. You guys have painted a likeness of your image, the Gentile, so that you guys can consult over here. Consult in the likenesses of their gods. That's what you guys like to do. Consult in a, wood, a whittled man at a wood on a freaking cross. A cross uh, creates division. Uh, a circle is a whole. Everybody helping one another out. Everybody. Yeah, like Brother Sean said last night, man. Great show, by the way, if you're listening to this, Sean. Okay, Hebrews 4.15, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who is every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. <clears throat> well, that's okay. I can show you right now that Jesus sinned because Jesus is contradicting himself. Here, Jesus says, if I testify about myself, my testimony is not valid. Then he says here, Jesus replied, even if I testify about myself, my testimony is valid. Not valid, is valid. Also, Jesus continues to say, because I know where I came from and where I'm going, but you don't know where I came from or where I'm going. <clears throat> Why is Jesus telling you that you don't know where he came from or where he's going? Because you don't know where I come from or where I'm going. Sorry about that. Huh. Now who is that? That is the the star right there. Right here, how you have fallen from heaven. <clears throat> o day star, son of the dawn. You have been cut down to the ground, O destroyer of nations. Who is so who do you think that is right there? That's Satan, the morning star, coming down to destroy the nations. It's funny how they got a black man playing Satan. <laughs> so again, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was God. Hold on. The very Word, Word... When you add the total sum of it, 23 being the W, O being the 15, that comes to 38, plus 18 for the R brings you to 56, plus 4 for the D brings you to 6, 0. 6 plus 0 is 6. So the very word here, the word, the word, the word said three times in succession means 666, six, six. kaboom. And when we drop right down to 1030, right below it, again, you have Jesus saying, I and the Father are one. That's the second time that the Holy Spirit's been kicked to the curb. What happened to the Holy Spirit? What happened to the Great Spirit? What happened to the Creator? You're going to find that Jesus Christ often dumps the Holy Spirit. Jesus said to them, 858 of John, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was... I am. Now, this is a big one. This is crucial to understand. So, Jesus is saying before Abraham was, I am. But what does it say? He was born, right? Right here. Being born in the likeness of men. Jesus was born in the likeness of men. Before Abraham was, I am. Who is Jesus? He's the firstborn, right? Right here, 
The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn. Jesus is the firstborn over all creation. Jesus is born, folks. Remember, he claims, Jesus himself claims, he's the beginning and the end. So now you know that when he says that before a, before Abraham was, I am, that he's speaking specifically of being the firstborn, that he's always been here. But there is no other gods. So Jesus can't, Jesus can't exist as God if the creator is saying that there's no other gods beside him. John 2, 1, 7, For many deceivers have come out of the world, or come out into the world. Key word here, out. Have gone out into the world. Those who do not confess the coming of Christ in the flesh, such a one is a deceiver and the Antichrist. Well, hold on, hold on. Here Jesus tells us, but Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. So that kind of uh, is opposite in opposition of right here. Such is one as the deceiver and the antichrist, those who do not confess the coming of Jesus in the flesh. So this Jesus here is saying that you have to confess his name in the flesh. So, and those that do not confess Jesus Christ's name in the flesh, they call the antichrist. No, these are narcissistic blame shifters and scapegoaters unaccountable for their own sins and too weak. So rather than being held accountable for their own sins, they want to blame shift and lay it on some man that died on a cross in a pamper and probably shit all over himself. John twenty twenty eight. Thomas answered him, my Lord, my God. Hold on. Whoa. Let's check this one out. I think I got it open. There it is. Thomas replied, my Lord, my God, who's he talking about? This isn't the supreme self-existing eternal creator. No, this is a, a one in authority. It's a controller. And that's what I'm trying to teach you. Just because it says Lord and God in the Bible, you got to understand that the Bible has been hijacked. There's only one supreme exalted creator. All right. And he is the supreme. There is none beside him, Thomas replied. My Lord, my God, who's this God? You know, he's talking to Jesus right here, right now, folks. That's my point. So if he's talking to Jesus and he's saying, my Lord, my God, and this, uh, the Strong's is showing us that my Lord, my God is uh, a divinity of the supreme creator right here, a magistrate. Okay, so now you know that just because it says the word God in the diction or, or in the Bible doesn't mean that it's talking about the Creator. Um, the blessed hope, waiting on the blessed hope. I did I miss that one? Appearing in the glory of the great God, our Savior Jesus Christ. Oh, Titus, that's uh, our Savior, our great, our God, Savior. Hold on. Okay, here you are. I, yes, I am the Lord. See this? This is the self-existing eternal creator. This is the creator, folks. You don't mess with this one here. I mean, you can't. <laughs> you can't mess with him. There's nothing you can do to mess with him. And what does this Lord here say? There is no savior but me. I is singular, folks. It doesn't say that we the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Lords that are one Lord are the saviors of all of mankind simply says that I am the Lord and there is no savior but me. See, Christians, this is the problem is ministers aren't teaching you the entire, they, they want to get you away from the Old Testament and say that you're no longer underneath of the law. But clearly, if you've watched enough of my videos, you are under the law. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature. Stature, uh, remove the R. What do you have? Statue. That's what Jesus is. He's a statue and in favor with God and man. Okay? 
in Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and men. Huh. So uh, why would Jesus have to raise in stature to God if he is God? Makes no sense there. But of the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of un uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. The scepter of his uprightness? Hold on. Who, what's his scepter? There you go. There's your little Jesus Christ. Looks like a little stick man, doesn't it? Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. I'm not really sure if this might be a picture of uh, baby Jesus. But a scepter, you have the cross. And look at the baby. What's it throwing at you? A little Baphomet sign. Isn't that a beautiful thing? These people, they just love their little Baphomet signs. Yes, they do. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's three times now. that We've just read through. Hold on. We're at 14 parables now. And then this is the fourth one now. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. This is four times now that Jesus has mentioned the Father and has cast the Holy Spirit, the Creator. When I say holy, folks, I'm talking W-H-O-L-L-Y, not H-O-L-Y, because H-O-L-Y, uh, you can take the... Um, Y off of holy, place a little dash and add an E right there. And then what do you have? You have a Bible that's full of holes. And that's what the problem is here, is the Bible is full of holes because it's been tampered with. Also, if you ask me, this sounds like Jesus exalting himself at God's throne. And who else exalts themselves at God's throne? <laughs> the beast, the devil, John 4, 2. By this, you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. Um, I'm going to have to look at this one and show you. Okay, here we're at that parable. And you see again that God is clearly a divinity of the supreme. It's a deity. Okay? It's a deity, folks. That's uh, very important for you to understand. That that's not the supreme, self-existing, eternal one. Okay, now, taking a very look at the word Jesus, again, in the Strong's Concordance, Jesus' number is 2424. The proper pronunciation, and they've changed this, this is Iason, Iasos, it's spelt S-O-U-S, -S. okay, I'm very aware of the Mandela effect today, and they do change, there are spiritual changes that are taking place in the Bible right now, because there is a big awakening that is taking place, man, God's chosen children are finally starting to wake up, and the Gentile are finally starting to hear that there is going to be a wrath, and something to pay terribly for your sins, all right, Jesus, the name of our Lord is, and two other Israelites. Who are the two other Israelites? And again, when you're looking at Jesus and two other Israelites, what is that? That's that's three, right? The very number three in the Strong's Concordance means Abaddon. And its usage is the destroying angel or a place of destruction. Okay? The number three is Abaddon, and its usage is the destroyer, okay, the destroying angel, which we know is Satan. Uh, John nineteen twenty eight. after this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said, to fulfill the scriptures, I thirst. Um, if there's a Hebrew brother out there that wants to throw it down there in the comment section, uh, what Jesus thirsts for here, um, let me know. It's only one thing that I could think of that Jesus thirsts for. Blood, right? That's what he says. If he's thirsting on this plane of existence, Jesus says that his flesh is good food and his blood is good drink. Hebrews 1.3 He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. Again, the word comes to 6-0. 
After making purifications for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Now, there you go. You got Paul exalting Jesus at the throne of God. Well, here's what's very dangerous for you Christians right here. Now, Jesus is exalting himself at God's throne. And this is the downfall of the king of Babylon. You said in your hearts, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my thrones above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the far reaches of the north. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. Hmm. Hmm. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purifications for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Set down at the right hand of the majesty on high. That to me sounds like whatever this is, that it also, I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. That's arrogance. That's proud. That's pride. Galatians 4.4 4. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. What's that right there? Born of a woman. Born under the law. What is the law? Here is your law. The scribes of the five books of Moses. These are your laws. Jesus was born, and he was born under the law. Jesus didn't come to abolish the law or the prophets. He came to fulfill the law and the prophets. So Paul, in this parable here, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, <clears throat> born under the law, this is a truth bomb. Paul told the truth in this parable. That Jesus of Nazareth was born. Okay? Acts 2.22. Jesus of Nazareth was a man. Acts 2.24. God raised, up, raised him up. Loosing the pangs of death. Because it was not possible for him to be held by it. So it can't. It's saying here that Jesus wasn't held by death. Well hold on. Here at Isaiah chapter 53, we're going to drop down here to, um, let's see, 9. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. This is the paved way for you guys. If you can't see the, the parables here and how they're contradicting themselves in with right in the same book right here. This same chapter has all kinds of uh, contradictions in it. Okay, so, and he made his grave with the wicked, Jesus, and with the rich, Jesus, in his death, Jesus, Jesus' death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth, right? Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, he hath put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. This is all uh, added infiltration, this is all uh, bullshit, however... He, the Lord, he shall see his seed, meaning Jesus will see his offspring, and he shall prolong his days, meaning Jesus didn't die on that cross, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. So Jesus got to see his children, Jesus got to prolong his days, and Jesus prospered in the Lord's hands, which means that he went on and had a, a decent life. But then, and then uh, that one, the one that was upright, a man that was upright, Christ crucified the lie, the star God, Jesus Christ, superstar, he's going to burn in hell. Okay, now here, Paul had just got done writing one parable that was a truth parable, and now here you got another parable that's completely opposite of it. Therefore, he had to be made like his brothers in every respect so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make appropriations for the sins of the people. Well, we just, just showed you in Isaiah 53, 
if Jesus has taken appropriations for our sins, why does it say here then he was taken from prison? Jesus was in prison and from judgment. Jesus was in prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generations? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. Jesus was cut off from the land of the living. You suppose this is why he wants to be the God of the dead? For the transgressions of my people was he stricken. Okay, Jesus was put on a, a tree. He wasn't placed on a cross, folks. I destroy the stories. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. Oh yeah, hold on. Uh, here we have Isaiah 45, 7. I form the light and create the darkness. I form, I bring prosperity and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. So darkness here is evil. It's wickedness. The creator creates evil and wickedness. All right. And clearly you can see that I is not uh, three different people. I means I, myself, alone, none beside. I do all these things. So then you are out of line. For him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. How could this be? Also, I want to pull one more up for you. Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie or the son of man, that he should change his mind. Others say that he should repent, okay? Does he speak and not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? So God is not a man. Hmm. God is not a man, huh? If God is not a man, then why does it say that, that he is plural of God? Right here, 410, L, God is plural, God's shortened from Ayel, strength as objective, mighty, especially the almighty. The almighty, uh, I like everything about this other than L. We don't worship L, we worship the creator. We don't put a name to the creator. L on this plane of existence, if you ask me, is Satan. It's the devil. It's the, the, the one in power and authority on this plane of existence. God is not a man. So if God is not a man, for in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. The spirit of God doesn't dwell within man. Okay, guides them, sends angels to do the work, but the Spirit of God does not dwell in man. Romans 8, 3, For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Did he? Or are you guys living a hallucin? Or that, that to me sounds like a Santa Claus story. Again, the Son is the likeness of sinful flesh. Huh? The Son is the likeness of sinful flesh. Jesus is sinful flesh. It told you right there. But yet, hundreds of scriptures say that he's perfect. <clears throat> but here it tells you that he's the likeness of sinful flesh. So which is it? Is he the likeness of sinful flesh? Or is he pure without sin? John 17, 5, And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. Okay, well, uh, again, this is five times now, and we've heard Jesus mention the Father, and not one mention of the Holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y, Spirit who's complete, who's whole, who's wholesome, wholeness, you don't see any Holy Spirit around here. Again, that's five times Jesus has mentioned the Father and hasn't spoken a word about the Creator. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things that were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made. And without Him was not anything made that was made. And that's true. 
Why? Because everything that was being created in the first part of creation story from Genesis 1-1 to Genesis 1-3 is all a fabrication. It's all created in an image, the same as like what you look at on your television set. We live in a virtual reality. We live in a machine. We live in a box. It's a living, breathing machine, but it's still a machine all the same. Isaiah 9-6, for, uh, for to us a child is born. This is a split parable. Why do they add to us a son is given? Because these are two different creations. One is an upright man that was born. This is the beginning. All right. To us a son is given is the star God. The one that falls from the star. This one here, right in plain sight. time I look at you, I don't understand why you let the things you did get so out of hand. You'd have managed better if you'd had a plan. No, why'd you choose such a backward time in such a strange land? If you'd come today, you could have reached the whole nation. Israel in for BC had no mass communication. And then what does it go on to say? I'm going to make this my last parable because I'm kind of getting hungry, guys. I think I've gone through at least 35 or 40 parables with you. Um, so then again, you have this one here. Unto us a child is born. This is Jesus of Nazareth. He is born in a manger at the nativity scene. All right. To us a son is given is the star God. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. Why are the governments, if they are evil, on Jesus' shoulders? And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Hold on. Right here, folks. Now, judgment is upon this world. Now, the prince of this world will be cast out. Jesus is the prince of this world. Jesus is the one that's being worshipped in this world. They just closed my box, them turds. Hold on. Oh, guys, it looks like my... There it goes. I was going to say, they locked up my computer. Give me a second. This thing's lagging now. Yeah, they're freezing up my computer and stuff right now, bro. So I'm going to close out all these boxes. Give me a second. Wow, it took me like five minutes to just close those windows down, folks. They would not... They would not let me close anything down. Closing out this parable, as I told you... That Jesus is the Prince of the Peace. That's the, He's the one that everybody's worshipping on this plane of existence. And the Prince of this world will be cast out, folks. I think it's time to wake up. Truly, I do. All praise and glory to the mighty, most higher creator who is one God. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Please like the video. Subscribe. And most of all, if you're a servant of the Most High, please share my content. So that this message can get out to others. Bow your heads in prayer. Our creator, the spirit which moves all things in place. The great one in the sky. There is none like you above the sky. You are the eternal self-existing almighty one. I am humble before you. Please place your spirit upon anybody that may be listening to this message right now. May they submit to you and call out to your almighty power and ask you to place the truth upon them so that the scales may be removed from their eyes. I cry out for humanity today, the human race and what they've endured, what they've went through, the indigenous people of this nation. My heart falls out. My ancestors are rotten. I call them on everything, Lord. Please place your spirit upon us so that we can walk upright and not go about naked and without clothing. Please place your spirit upon our souls so that when our bodies die, our soul can return home to you. We ask all these things only in your almighty presence, our creator, who is one God, a spirit. This is White Raptor News Ministries.